Hello and welcome everyone. What's up YouTube channel, Club Fitz Fitness in the house. I am Hi, Lauren Hi. Fitz. <laughs> hello Facebook and on Club Fitz Fitness channel. What is up? My name is Dr. Lauren Fitz and I am joined today not only by my lovely co-host, Symphony McAllister, That's but right. I'm joined by all of my friends and fellow coaches on Team Fitz here in sunny Southern California. And we are at the Hyatt Resort. We have just been laying by the pool. We're about to go do some stand-up paddle boarding and having fun and fellowship. So you guys, the episode that we recorded this morning, it has everything to do with relationships. It's gonna be dropping on Monday. It's an episode that you do not wanna miss. Am I right, Symphony? Yeah, make sure that your kiddos aren't around when you listen to it, though. Yes, yes, because <laughs> um, <laughs> we talk I, about all sorts of parts of relationships. We do, we do, and and there may or may not have been a few s bombs <laughs> because it was totally necessary. Mm -hmm. Robert's gonna bleep them out, but still, it's it's a topic that um, pretty much everyone, whether you're single, divorced, married, you've been in a long relationship, um, you're straight, gay, lesbian. This is a relationship episode that every single person can learn from and open up a whole new channel of learning from another podcast that I talk about. So I wanted to talk today about now, obviously, Fitz Friday Q&A Live. I want you guys to be feel free to ask any question. And yes, I am a medical doctor, but I'm not your medical doctor. So any advice that I give is generic for the public and obviously I don't know everything just because I'm an MD does not mean I know everything. So I will mm. answer any question to the best of my ability. If I don't know the answer, I will try my hardest to find the answer and get back to you and answer it. Um, that being said, every time that we record these, I like to have a theme that we start to talk about and we can go off on a tangent, but today <laughs> I kind of want to talk about relationships and community. Okay. Because I think that it's really important that you see, of course, I'm here with community people that I have relationships with. And, um, th this is something that I think, especially now in 2017, we really underestimate the importance of actual community. Um, we, so many people, so this is, <laughs> I, I challenge all of you to start to be more aware of this whole concept, not concept, but this, everyone on their phone in every occasion, like it's ridiculous. And the social media is making us less and less social and relationships are becoming less and less real and less and less people interaction. And I, I, I want to introduce these ladies because these ladies all started off really as friends on social media, people that I would have never met in a million years if it weren't for social media. And the example that social media actually can lead to real community and real friendships um, if you allow it to. But this this is the first time that, so most of you guys know that I'm a health and fitness coach. Both Cynthia and I are health and fitness coaches and we both have our own teams of coaches, which th these are all team fits coaches. So they have their own health and fitness coaching businesses as well. But this is the first time that we've gotten together just as a team to come together and just have fellowship and celebrate community. Because at the end of the day, we as human beings were meant to have fellowship. And if you are lacking in fellowship in your life, it will affect everything, guys. It will affect your sleep. It will affect your skin. It will affect your mental status. It will affect your relationships that you do have. If you don't really take to heart how important the community communities that you have are and really start utilizing them and appreciating them, it will only be of detriment to you. And, and it's so easy for someone like myself, who is actually a lot of times people are surprised when they hear this, but I'm actually an introvert. Like what, what that means is that I really like to be by myself. <laughs> I really am comfortable being by myself, whether it's 
if I'm traveling, I'm cool. If I'm just at home and, and like Friday night, if I don't have plans, that's actually best. <laughs> like I enjoy being at home, watching a movie, just being by myself, but I can be outgoing. And that's where people are, are kind of like, huh? So someone like me who is really an introvert at heart, it is easy for me to get into the, um, uh, the trap of underestimating how important community is. But it's times like this that literally I just feel like, you know, when your, your battery is like 1% and you're like, oh, I've got to get a charger before this goes out. Like when, when you are working hard and you're focused on other tasks, it is so easy to let that part of your life run down to empty. I'm the first person to, to admit to being guilty for that. And I just feel like most of you guys know that I just spent the last 10 days traveling to Dallas, to Washington, to Virginia, Washington, DC, that is. And, and now I'm here in, in my, it's not home state, but this is where I live in Southern California. And they all came to me and, and it's, I've been getting my cup filled and my battery recharged because this community, uh, it's everything. And, um, and I just, I, I hate when I see people at dinner and every single person is on their phone or you're at a place where people are supposed to be interacting and every single person is on your phone. So, um, so Symphony, what are your thoughts so far? I totally agree. And just like you were talking about how, you know, people either charge you or drain you. (laughs) And when you have the specific tribe that is just your people, they definitely charge you in ways that some other people can't and that you can't receive from any other type of community except for the people that are, like I said, just your people, your tribe, that they know you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I'm going to just introduce everyone real fast. I'm just going to pass the microphone and just, I I want, I want the audience to, to hear my community's uh, voice and where they're from just so that they get to know, um, my, my people. So I'm going to pass the mic around. Hello, I'm Lori Hoy and I'm coming clear across the country from PA. Shout out to Pennsylvania. Go Nittany Lions. You're going to have to come close to the microphone because it doesn't stretch that far. (laughs) Karen Horn from Virginia Beach, Virginia. What, what? Two East Coasters. Patty from here. Still yeah. Cal. <laughs> Laura Skinger from Pittsburgh, PA. Two yeah. PA. Two PA. Yeah, gotta get close. Hi, I'm Derby. I was in California and I came back. Yay. <laughs> I'm Angela. I'm from Kansas City. Yay, Midwest. Hey, I'm Kimberly Hall. I'm also from Cali, originally, Texas. We got what? girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so these are just a few of my people, my tribe, and um, you know, in the the whole. And I mean, coaching is no different from a lot of different businesses. You attract your tribe, and um, this is why you have a, a group of women that are from all over. Completely, none of us live in the same towns. I mean, even my SoCal yeah. people, that it it takes a good hour, hour and a half to drive to any of them, or two hours. Yeah. Um, but, but the fact is that like attracts like, and when you are focusing on your community, you're going to surround yourself by people that are like-minded. So, so do we have any questions that we need to, to, that are about community yet? I don't have any questions about community, but I do have one about exercise and having a cold. Yeah. And this, this was a good, good question. So you read this to us right before we went live. So, so let's go ahead and get to the the Q and a part. So Courtney wants to know, she said, I have a question. Is it beneficial, detrimental, or does it matter to work out when you have a common cold? Okay. So, so this is a great question. And and there's a few points that I want to make again, I'm a medical doctor, but not your medical doctor, (laughs) but, um, When the body is fighting, whether it be a bacterial infection or viral infection, fungal infection, or, or multiple infections, the body was not meant to exercise because the body is already burning a ton of energy trying to fight off whatever that Mm -hmm. pathogen is, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go against nature and you try and exercise just, and I've been guilty of it. I've been that person in the past that's like, oh, I've got to get my exercise in. But the fact is you're 
causing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. Um, I will, I I will tell you a horror story to hopefully scare (laughs) you out of exercising when you're sick. Um, because these kind of things can happen. So there was, um, someone that I knew when I was in my residency for anesthesia and, um, this person who was like health and fitness advocate, like was a runner and like really in like had always been healthy and, and fit. Right. Um, this, this was an attending. So the, they were older. Um, but they fought the, the whole idea of resting during, you know, whatever kind of upper respiratory infection they had, Mm -hmm. it was a viral infection. And this particular type of virus has a history and it's very rare, but it has a history of causing what's called a cardiomyopathy. So basically the virus can get into, um, the cells that basically make your heart enlarge. And that person, and I'm not saying that this is going to happen to everyone that exercises when they're sick, but Mm. the fact is that that was the body's way of, of dealing with the added stress when they were sick and it caused permanent damage. Like it made the patient's heart enlarge and stay enlarged and like literally like had to have a pacemaker and everything. I mean, literally. So, so no, it's not going to happen to everyone. That's obviously an extreme example. Mm-hmm. But the fact is when your body is sick, listen to it. If you don't feel like exercising, it's for a reason. Uh, and guess what? Most people, when they're sick, they don't feel like eating. That's okay. The only thing you need to make sure that you are doing is consuming water because we can't survive without water, right? Yeah. But fasting. It, and if any of you guys have heard any of the podcasts that we've done about pot, uh, fasting or any other podcast about fasting, a good point is that that's something seen in nature, not just in humans. When, uh, when an animal is sick, they don't eat, right? Mm-hmm. When we are sick, we don't feel like eating and that's okay. That's nature's way of saying, okay, let me just calm everything down and not cause any more inflammation, any more reaction, right? So that the body can do what it's designed to do and heal and recover. So that's, that's your generic advice from Dr. Lauren Fitz. (laughs) Because even with the infection that I've had in my leg, I, I, I want to work out because I, the rest of me feels fine, but, and it's been so hard to not work out, Uh but I know that you have to allow your body the time that it needs to prepare, repair itself. Absolutely. We have to tell them about our three-way text messages between you and me and Robert about figuring out the title of last week's Q&A. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we are pretty good about all being on the same page and like agreeing. Like that's pretty, we're all pretty good about that because we share the same vision. But <laughs> Robert always sends us a preview of like kind of like the cover work that he makes, the beautiful cover work that he makes for um, our YouTube videos and for our the thumbnails. Um, podcast. Yeah, the thumbnails. And he had included the very graphic picture of my leg (laughs) on the cover photo. And I was like, like, nope. uh, Nope. (laughs) Nope. And then we went back and forth about what the what it should be called and whether pus should be in the title or not. Like just ugh. Yeah, it took us because, a good five or doctor, ten minutes. Yeah, the doctor and me is like, well, it, it should have pus in it because people need to know about pus. And then Symphony's <laughs> like, um, I wouldn't listen to that if I saw the word pus. Any, any- <laughs> like if I, I told her, I was like, if I opened a magazine and there was um, something about infections, I would read it. If there was an article about infections and pus, I would not want to read it because of that word. <laughs> so but, we but went my- back and forth forever, but we ended up titling it and there is no pus in the title. I don't, I don't know. I think we need to take a... a- <laughs> Like, because all, they're all saying like pus happens. Like, pus oh, happens so pus good. I think for me, it's just like, you know, like the word, <laughs> you know, like the word moist, like how that's like, people don't like that word. You know, I think that's yeah, what pus yeah. is for me. Like I just, oh, the word just grosses me out. Ugh, it freaks me out. <laughs> so like, we, ended up, on we ended up cutting out pus and we ended up going with the proper picture because the first picture of course had the actual picture of her pussed out leg. Ugh. And then the second picture was this like sexy picture of me and Cynthia. And I'm like, that's not the right picture for the thumbnail. I'm just saying. Uh, which is funny because we don't have very many sexy pictures to begin with. Because <laughs> no, that we're was kind of a hot mess. So yeah. we're really hard to photograph. Shout out to Lori um, Sparkling yeah. because she, she's our photographer and she makes us look good when we are for a real. true hot for mess real. 90% for of real. the time. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So do we have any other questions? Because I've got a few more things to say if we don't have any more questions. We do have one question. Okay, says, sweet. Somebody asked how my leg is doing. My leg is fine. 
I will be great. I'm going to make full recovery. <laughs> full recovery. <laughs> It'll full be recovery. fine. <laughs> but um, Autumn wants to know, she said, where do you like to travel to? Oh, okay. Symphony, you go first. Uh, anywhere that's not here. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, I love Texas. I love being in Texas, but I have definitely had like a travel bug lately where I just, I travel pretty often, but I haven't traveled. And this, like I said, I travel often. So I haven't traveled in about three months. And that's I'll say, you're a about long to time like a for me. Brat. You know, I know, brat. I know. That's why I'm saying it's different. For everybody. I, have, I haven't traveled in three months. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't traveled in three months. And so for me, like I'm starting to get like just Antsy. an itch to go yeah. somewhere. Um, but I really, I would like to travel to, um, actually the like big bear, like the redwood forest area in, um, California. I really want to go there. It's beautiful. So I actually, I, I grew up in my family. We only did road trips to Colorado. I was convinced I wanted to live in Colorado. So I didn't, we didn't travel a whole lot, but we did have the annual, you know, family vacation, right? The long road trip. And one, one summer we did go to, to Florida for Disney world, but, um, <laughs> but I didn't really start at catching the travel bug till I actually came to, to San Diego when I was 19. That was the first time I'm like, Ooh, I like experiencing cause San Diego is, you know, yes, it's in the United States, but California in it, itself, it's just, it's like a completely different culture. So this little Texas girl who was born and raised in, you know, a very sheltered place. And I come out to California and I mean, you know, my dad still calls them the weirdos out here in California. <laughs> but, um, but since then, I mean, I, I love traveling to places that are so different than what I'm used to. So I can learn from the people with the caveat that there's not snow. <laughs> We were just talking about this on, on walking over here from the pool. Deal breaker. Yes, for sure. Because I, especially after living in the snow, um, after living in Northern Japan where it snows for nine months out of the year, like it's just overrated to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that there's some people that are like, Oh, I love the four seasons. No, mm -mm. you can <laughs> four seasons. I'm okay with 70 degree weather year round. I'm just yeah. saying, but, totally. um, honestly the, the top three places I've, I've been, quite, I, I'm blessed and, and lucky enough to have traveled a decent amount in my 37 years. Uh, mm -hmm. My top three favorite places are almost all warm tropical locations. And um, so Maldives, I, I was wearing my I Heart Dubai shirt, but apparently, mm -hmm. I mean, top hat, shirt, top hat. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> try. Um, but Dubai, we stopped on Dubai on the way to Maldives. Maldives was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, Brazil, shout out to my Brazilian um, fans because you guys, that country is just uh, full of natural beauty like I've never seen. Um, and then um, the, the the Greek Isles, that's a different kind of beauty, but it's it's still almost all of them involve ocean. Uh, and yeah. I love being <laughs> to the ocean, so... Yeah. So yeah. And, you know, traveling with a community, you know, bringing back to the, the topic that I mainly wanted to focus on, um, taking trips with, you know, people that you care about, not just mm -hmm. family vacations, but, you know, mm -hmm. like for instance, one of my, my close girlfriends and I, we're going to go to do a snow skiing weekend in November and it's just going to oh, be the two of us. I, for a weekend, I can do. <laughs> she a doesn't want to live in the snow. <laughs> yeah, for real. I'm, I'm for real. the same and, way. In November, it's not that cold. It's not like, mm -hmm. we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> the Pennsylvania people are like, with me. You, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> for real, for real. Speaking so. of community and travel, though, um, last year I surprised my then fiance with a trip to Colorado to go skiing with his best friend and his best friend's girlfriend. And long story short, we, our, our car broke down and we were stuck in New Mexico for four days. And if you can't, if you don't enjoy your community, if you don't enjoy the people that you're with, that is like the worst thing that can happen to you. So I was yes. thankful for my tribe of who I was stuck with because yeah, you have to appreciate the people you're surrounded oh, with. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And especially if you're like, Oh, okay. Do you remember this was maybe about five years ago where, when the, um, the cruise ship that lost power and was out at sea for like in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh yeah. So yeah. one of my high school friends, one of my closest friends was on that boat. 
Oh, no way. Yeah, mm -hmm, she was. But this is the greatest thing because she's like, man, she's one of those people that just lives what she believes. And mm -hmm. it's just apparent in her every word, every action. She's just like a, a super positive person. And of course, shout out to Sarah Rogers. I don't know if Sarah listens to my podcast, but uh, <laughs> anyone that grew up with me and knows Sarah Rogers, Sarah Rogers has been the same since the day I met her. And sure enough, she was one of the people on the, the cruise ship that, like I'm, I'm sure she brought out her guitar because she plays music. <laughs> she, she's got a beautiful voice, but you know, she basically just brought positive energy to that cruise ship. And, and, you know, it, it's, it could have been an, a very easy circumstance going to the, the that negative energy and whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're surrounded by people that bring the positivity, which of course, you know, we talk about different energies uh, on the, the podcast that's going to yeah. be uploaded on, on Monday. But, but yeah, that's, that can be a game changer in a good way or a bad way. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Do we have we any do other have one question? Okay. Um, she wants to know, she said, why can't I get my boyfriend to stop being so rude to me? I think this is a good one to talk about because we're talking about community and relationships. Mm. Symphony go. Well, if your boyfriend's rude to you, I think you need to stand up for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. we talked about this on our podcast earlier today, but you, I think that it's, and clearly I don't know you personally or know your situation, but I know for me, what has always worked is that I, you have to love yourself unconditionally before you can allow another person to attempt to do that as well. Mm -hmm. And in being that way, that means that you have to demand respect where you deserve it and know what you deserve and not settle for less. And so it sounds like if you're in a situation where someone does not respect you, even though you deserve that kind of respect, the best thing to do is to be able to remove yourself from that situation. Yes. And you know, if, if you have people in your life that, um, and this is one thing that I just, I never really appreciated. I, I wish that I would have appreciated how important it is to have someone that is a mentor to you and then mm. someone that you are mentoring in your mm -hmm. life. And if you have one or two mentors in your life that are positive role model that, that speak truth into you that, you know, because you know, there's that, like, I, I'm blessed. My parents, I've always had my back. I've always been the supportive parents and, and that there have been plenty of times in my life, like with my last two relationships, they both knew that it was not good for me. And they tried mm -hmm. to speak some truth into me, but there's that always that element of kid versus parent. Like you're yeah. trying to control me and I, yeah. I I'm an adult. I mean, yeah. literally <laughs> like I was just talking with, with one of my girls who's 26 and, and, and she's temporarily before she buys a house, she's living with her parents. And her mom was like, I think you need to go to bed. And she's like, I think I'm 26 and I know when <laughs> to go to bed. You know, So there's always that, like, no matter how old we get, that parent child relationship, it's hard for a parent to turn that off, especially yeah. when they're, you know, 18 and they're an adult, like you, yeah. the relationship has to change. Right. But yeah. if you have someone that's not related to you, that is a mentor that can speak truth into you and be like, look, I'm telling you this in love, but it, ultimately if you want to be loved, you have to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. And if you don't love yourself first, then how can you expect someone to love you? Absolutely. Teach people how to treat you for sure. And, you know, I look back to when I was 27 years old and, and anyone that hasn't heard, um, my previous podcast, uh, I'm pretty sure I talked about this on the seize the day episode. Um, but that, that day that I was 27 years old, um, I had been dating my now ex-husband. I'd been dating him for about it was four or six weeks. I mean, it was a significant amount of time enough to, that I had already emotionally bonded to him. And I knew that he had one kid, but I didn't know he had three more that were triplets that were two years old. Wait, and four I, to six weeks or four to six months? We had been dating four to six weeks. Okay. So, so it was, you know, a short amount of time, but not really long mm -hmm. enough for me to already be emotionally bonded to this man. Yeah. And, and I didn't love myself enough to recognize mm -hmm. that this man had been lying to me. Mm -hmm. He did by tell, not telling me that he had three other children that's lying. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't respect myself and love myself enough to stand up for myself and say, you know what? I deserve better. Now yeah. I don't regret because there was so many great things that happened because I ended up in that relationship. Shout out to Hannah. Love my girl. She was my stepdaughter will always be like a daughter to me. Yeah. But, um, but like 
I didn't respect myself and love myself enough to stand up for myself. And, Mm -hmm. you know, especially young females, and it doesn't matter how confident you are, how beautiful Mm -hmm. you are, whatever, Mm -hmm. like the, the whole, if you weren't taught by your father, how to be cherished and loved by a male, the way it's supposed to be, then it's really, really easy to fall into all of the pressures of society. Settling. Settling. Yes. Yeah. Don't settle, girl. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't settle. That's you. why, like I said, it's so important to completely and unconditionally love yourself enough to be able to remove yourself from situations that don't serve you. Yes, absolutely. And absolutely. being able to identify that. Yes. I think a lot of young women are afraid to be by themselves. Yes. Totally. But I can totally, see, you know, I decided before meeting my now husband that I was going to live by myself for a while, not be attached in a relationship. And Mm -hmm. because I recognized that I was uncomfortable being alone. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I was not making great choices with my relationships. And I decided I had to get good with me. And it was the best decision I made because I was able to identify my now husband with clarity that he was what I deserved, even though he was the exact opposite. Of what I've been dating. <laughs> Which I can't wait for you to listen to the episode on Monday because oh, we yes. talk about that exact yes. same thing for sure. For sure. <laughs> no, and, and it's true. And and uh, I, I hope that all of you guys go and download the episode on Monday because it's it's a great episode. And I talk about my own personal um, road, my transition, because mm-hmm. a lot of you guys know that um, I've now officially been divorced for a year and a few months. I got divorced officially June of 2016. And this whole time it's, I've just, I've been working on me and learning how to freaking love me, what I want, what I'm, what I don't want more importantly. Um, and, and figure out so that I do this relationship thing right next. I'm, I, unhealthy relationships can be like literally the most poisoning thing in your life. And it doesn't have to be someone that, you know, your significant other that you're dating or married to. I mean, it can be a friendship that's toxic or it can Mm -hmm. be relationship with either your parent or your child. Mm -hmm. And, And you have to recognize that at the end of the day, that adult is their own adult and they, you can't change them. You can't make them do anything. You can't make them love you. You can't make them treat you right. The only thing that you can control is your thoughts and your words and your actions. And at the end of the day, you don't deserve to be disrespected and, and mistreated and you deserve to be loved fully for the, the person you are. What, what? Totally. Amen. Right? <laughs> what, what? <laughs> <laughs> so we have right. another question. Okay. Why does my ex get jealous when I have moved on? Mm. I think mm. she said it right there because you have moved on. <laughs> yes. Yes, e- exactly. <laughs> we, if, if we wouldn't get in trouble with Facebook, I would totally play single ladies right we now. Want. <laughs> but, we want what we can't have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and men are no different. No, for sure. For sure. Yes, for sure. And you know, um, the, the lady that I talk about on Monday, actually, she, she's been a therapist for over 40 years. And she mm-hmm. talks about the fact that in relationships, um, jealousy is actually a healthy sign. Um, but jealousy in a non-existent relationship uh, just means that they emotionally haven't gone on, moved on. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I really think if, if you guys listen on Monday and start listening to the, this, this chick that I talked about, we recommend. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And she's actually here in orange County and I'm hoping to get uh, an interview with her because it would be an awesome podcast. Yeah. <laughs> she's amazing. So. Yeah. So any other questions before we wrap this up? Because I'm sweating balls right here in the sun. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of community, no, y'all are sitting around ready to go to the pool. So I think we're good for today. That's from pool time. (laughs) (laughs) We're good. We're good? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) All right. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to be with us here on Fitz Friday. And um, make sure that if you haven't gone and subscribed, are, we're doing jazz hands. Yes. Jazz hands. <laughs> That's my tribe right there. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. <laughs> Not spear fingers, oh, jazz hands for trying. sure. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, we are uh, October 1st is Sunday and that is celebrating four months of this podcast. Mm-hmm. And I think that we didn't hit a hundred thousand 
for Symphony's wedding. Wah, wah. But we still could do it for yes. October 1st. We're, we're at 99.8. 99.9. 99. 99. So really, we just need just 90, 90 downloads, downloads y'all. So go help us <laughs> sister out. Help please. us sister out. Yes. Go please subscribe. And if, if you would like to leave a review, we would love you even more because mm-hmm. the more reviews that are left, the more easily searchable our podcast is. And believe it or not, there's a ton of people that have never heard of Club Fits, Lauren Fits, Fits and Healthy. And um, and we have a message that can help a lot of people. So by you leaving a review, um, it helps it be more searchable so that more people can find us. And totally. if you want to share our podcast on your social media, we ain't going to be sad either. Just uh-uh. like <laughs> tag us so we can see it and like it and give you a shout out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So make sure that you follow us. We're, we're start our Instagram page is small, but we are starting to build that. Make sure that you follow us on all of our social media platforms, club fits, fitness page, the Dr. Lauren Fitz page, Symphony's page. What is your page called on Symphony? Facebook? <laughs> Symphony. Symphony. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and Symphony, you want to wrap this up by telling them the most important message of the day? Yes. And it is that you are a good person and you deserve good things to happen to you. And good relationships. Amen. Yes. yes. All right, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll talk to you all later. Guys. Bye. Make sure that you find us on social media. You can find Symphony on Instagram and Facebook at Symphony. So that's C-I-N-T-H-A-N-I-E. And on Snapchat at Symphony P. And find me on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Club Fitz Fitness. Remember, that's F-I-T-Z Fitness. And on Snapchat, just at Club Fits. I appreciate your time listening so much. If you enjoyed this episode of the Fits and Healthy Podcast, can you please go do me a favor and go subscribe at whatever platform that it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. We read every single review and we appreciate the time that you take to leave your thoughts and opinions. Now, also remember, while I am a medical doctor, the information I provide here is not intended to provide medical advice or a professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or to any other individual. I am providing general information for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for medical or professional care. You should not use this information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other healthcare provider. The information I share is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. If you believe you have a medical emergency, just call 911 immediately or your physician. Now, enough of that medical legal jargon. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time. Now go live a fit and healthy life.